and this is part nine now of the um, of the whole corrections video series and I've done quite a bit off camera which is why you haven't had a video was it yesterday uh, today is Sunday Sunday the 3rd of January and I don't think I did one yesterday night for the for the second um, but I have done quite a bit of work on this hull and you can see it over there and it's there as a tease because you can't see what I've done um, so we've got all the templates, you know, I make my cardboard templates and they're all done. We've got fishy there as well. Uh, so they're all done and they've all been used. And um, as I've said before, I also make a half template so that you can use it as a as a half rather than the full thing. Because until you've got both sides done, obviously a full form template like this one won't go over. What you can do is just push one out of the way and push one side down. It's just as easy to have a half template to go on. These are the pieces of plastic I've actually removed. So somebody did mention a few videos ago, and not, not in this series, but you know Nigel will end up with about 60% of his hull left, and um, you're probably not far off. So there's some plastic there gone. After I've milled all the slots for the windows and everything, and all the holes I've drilled and all that, so uh, yeah, there's probably not much of it left. I should have weighed it to start with and weighed it now. So there we go, so that's that. Um, this is my sprue goo. I've got this here purely because, some of you won't believe this, I had a, a comment on the channel, why don't you use sprue goo? Right, so um, anyway, um, here we go. I know you want to see this. I've done one side complete and left the other side so you can see the difference. And here it is. So this is the complete, what's this? This is the starboard side. The complete starboard side of the hull done. As you can see, I've still got some sprue goo in there wanting to go off to rub down and everything but basically when you get this this plastic card if you rub it so it's nearly like you can see here like it's nearly going through it's really thin it sort of tends to kind of delaminate so just repaired that area there with plastic card there's no need to fuss and worry about all this too much about surface surface finishes and having everything blended perfectly smooth because at the end of the day it's going to be plated um just like this so it's going to have high and low you know in and out plating on it so you're not really going to see any slight undulations in the surface and if you're doing it the same as me like basically this surface here will be the in plating I will only plate on the top of this with the outer strips so this will be what's underneath I won't be putting plating on for the in and then plating the out I'll be just plating the out so what you'll see is in between the outs these being the outs the ones that stick up all you'll see is this through them so um, it only needs to be perfect in there. So, I mean, you can glue all this on and then perfect it all with Mr. Servicer afterwards if you want to. Um, I also want to say that this area here, um, this area here I've done in a previous video, I'll put a clip in now. So um, my plan is to actually cut a section of this out on both sides and then I'll basically end up with this section here, which I can grind down and thin out to nothing and then glue these pieces back in okay basically back to back glued together and we'll have the shape then and then we can work around and do some surgery with the plastic and get the shape we want without just filling it up with tons of filler and doing loads of grinding and sanding so um let me get it marked out and then we'll start doing some drilling and there we are I've, I've marked out a, a square it's kind of a square i've gone 28 millimeters back from here and then a 30 millimeters line and then basically I've gone to the edge of the plating there and there which give me a good glade, a good glade, a good guide for the blade to run along. So I'm going to cut these out, I'll draw the corners first and I'm going to cut them out and basically then we'll have two holes in the sides of the hull Then I can work on getting this tapered down. I've got this tape here, this shows the line of the shaft that's going through there. Um, so basically then I can kind of sand away and leave this area here um, because I'll have to work on that after it's um, after it's done and then sort of basically taper that in but um, for now what I'm going to do is drill this and cut it out. Okay, so we should start off with a, a sharp point and give some support from behind and then just basically come just inside the corner and just mark a a divot for the drill to start in it's um it's good practice to go just inside the corner for when you're doing more precision stuff otherwise if you actually drill into the corner you kind of end up coming along and then you end up with the outside of the circle there so you want to try and keep the inside of the circle in the shape 
having said that in this situation it doesn't really matter because we're going to be doing lots of uh, blending and filling anyway so there we go That's we're kind of getting through there now so I'm going to go on and just cut the rest of this out and then I'll come back when I've done one side two hours later here we go we've got a hole through the hole hey and um, basically yes yeah, so now what we can do is we can thin this out get the profile in here correct looking at our uh, our book and our references and everything and then we can glue this back in and it's going to be sort of tapered in so that it kind of blends in and then we can fill all that in and blend all that and blend everything and it'll all look lovely and um, you're probably thinking why has he done that well the reason I've done it is because sanding all of this to get this thin down to get the shape would have been an absolute nightmare so it's sometimes easier just to cut it out you know it's only a plastic model it's not got a flirt or anything uh, just cut it out glue that back in and then you've got your your start there of your shape so um, you can also sometimes find if you take the part out and you turn it upside down you sometimes find that that will give you the shape you want or you use the part from the other side that might also um, help no that's not going to help but maybe the part from the other side upside down no that's not going to help but this side upside down might might help uh, might give us sort of more of the shape we want but um you know it's just a case of I've, I've, it's obviously not quite square because it's not going in but uh, it will go in if I push it but uh, you can see how much is removed from there now because this is actually now a raised portion and on this side it's flush so it's got it's getting us down to a nice slender and you can see on there if it will focus there's the mold line down the center of here and you can see I've got a lot less plastic on this side it's not really picking up on it is it but there you go you can see they've got a lot less plastic on this side than on this side so basically we're getting there I've also noticed I think the the whole hull shape here as usual with trumpeter ships um, they've got the the stern shape all around the propellers all wrong I'm not going to cut this about and correct it I've done that on my Bismarck um, I'm sure it probably needs it on the hood as well but um yeah so basically I'm not I mean I think this is actually too rounded in this area I think it should be sort of more this shape going further along and then sort of start to round out more about here I mean I'd probably do some sanding here just to correct it a little bit but I'm not going to start cutting about and fabricating a completely new stern um, because I think that will affect all this up here as well and I don't really don't want to be cutting all this about you know. so now you can see by a couple of clips I've put in from a previous video what I actually did in that area there so this is not how it comes out of the box or should I say when you look at this side this is not how it comes out of the box this is work I've done previously so uh, glad you've seen that so yeah we can see now that we've got a huge gap here um, on the on the side where it sort of goes into this what trumpeter have molded is the straight part of the hull and it shouldn't be um, so that's got to be blended in there now somebody a couple of people I think it was both called Mark have sent kindly put up links on the part 8 or was it the part 7 to some hull lines now be very careful with drawings that's all I'm saying um, you never know where they've come from so if it's somebody's interpretation of someone else's drawing if their interpretation has got some slight inaccuracies in it and the original drawing has got some slight inaccuracies in it then you can see that all these inaccuracies will build up um, I personally have seen plans where they've got this central part of the hull you know parallel for a long way I've seen other plans where the central part of the hull isn't parallel at all it sort of tapers in all the way up to the midships and then starts to taper in for the bow I'm not sure which is correct I haven't seen any official drawings all I can go on is what I've got in my Titanic the ship magnificent book where it states that the bulkhead drawings are taken from original plans so if I look at those plans that somebody's linked me and I find that at these positions these profiles agree with those plans or near enough then I'll believe them but those plans actually show this this curve carrying all the way up to around about here about station 12 aft so you know did it go that far forward with all this you know until it becomes this this sharper radius and sort of parallel it's all the way up to here I'm, I'm not sure we'll have to have a look it also shows that the hull is very 
if I put my hands here, if you can imagine my fingertips are the upper decks, it shows the hull as being very much tapered in. I've always led to believe it's kind of more like this. Um, sorry, more like that. So it tapers up slightly in this area. And then as the top comes, about the top inch here, it sort of starts to curve in a bit more. So I need to do some checks on that. But those plans certainly show the hull as being sort of pretty much wedge shaped uh, with a turn at the top rather than being sort of what I'm saying is more like exaggerated the plan looks more like that than than that yeah more like that than that so I'm not I'm not too sure um, I'm sure you guys will comment below and let me know so what I'm going to do is do the other side of this do the same here as I've done on this side sorry do the same here as I've done on this side and then I'm going to leave it for a few days at least to let it all go hard because we've got a lot of cuts in here you can see here we've got a lot of diagonal cuts um, you know they're all over the place you can see them all over the place and if you're wondering why I've done that basically if like this area of the hull here was leaning in the right amount this area of the hull here was too straight okay so this here is okay and this needs to lean in some more and this needs to lean in some more so what I've done is made a score there so that this panel or above can go in okay because I want to increase the slope there but I want to increase the slope here but not there so if you cut a diagonal when you fold that piece in obviously it won't change the angle here but it will change the angle there you can imagine I could fold that over at 90 degrees and it wouldn't make any difference here because it's a point same here didn't want to change that there but I wanted to get that to slope in so cut an angle Okay, this is actually two separate lots here. If you remember, I spoke in part eight about this and what I've actually ended up with. If I grab a straight edge, you can see I've got a rock in between the two. Now, if you can, you see that very well. But basically the way I was going to do it was just go straight. But you can see here I've got a rock between the two. So when it's all sanded and blended, it will radius into there rather than just going straight in there. I think in CAD you call it lofting and that's exactly what I was going to do. It does look like trumpeter have lofted from there to there sort of thing. So they had like a straight line. So you can see the difference now in what I've done. You can see if I do that, you can see how much this has been taken in. So um, there we go. Um, and again here you can see all these angles and this is done so that I could get that to go in without affecting here because as we're going back this this radius is tightening up and some of this is bent out as well so um and here I've gone almost to the center line cut a wedge out and actually brought that in so I actually cut this piece out here which actually cuts into the bit I just showed you that I added and I've cut that piece out and then cut a slither off of it and then wedged it in so that was actually out and then in this here is bent in and you can see we've got another angle on there because I've bent this in I wanted this to stay pretty vertical so that's what I've done there I've still got some more sanding to do in that area and yes I have removed all the um, all the strakes that I put in before so if you want to see a comparison of how it looks side to side um, not sure that you can really make it out there but you can see how much it's cut in here one good way I did find to do this if I put my fingers here over the over the sides and I keep my arm central over it you could watch that other finger I'm not changing the depth you can see my the finger at the upper side of the screen moving away from the lower side you can see how much difference it makes and my finger here is almost straight and this thumb is still it doesn't really change so I don't know if you can see that but um it's it's quite a difference uh, maybe I'll reset the angle up and then you can look down the length of the hole so I can show you that. Okay, so there you go you can see now looking straight down the length here this is the center line you can see how much wider the hull is here than it is here again look at the shape here compared to the shape there it's quite a large difference but um, what I need to find out now is about all this tapering in up here I think I'm going to taper it sort of up to here which is going to be like station 25 aft I'm guessing um, and the same on the front I'll blend it out on the bow should I say and that's then going to give me my curvature if we look on here we can see that Trumpeter have actually got to get the camera round Trumpeter have actually got this the, the bilge keel is just dead straight 
and the actual molded bilge kit is like a triangle shape which is incorrect as well so they've got that dead straight I've mentioned that before how it shouldn't be straight um, in either plane when you look at it from here looking at the side it should curve exaggerated like that and when you look at it from the underside it should curve exaggerated like that so it should taper in so it should form a, a C shape there when you look at it from underneath and a upside down smiley when you look at it from the side well if the ship's the right way up it would be a proper smiley wouldn't it It'd be a smiling face so um, I'm guessing with all these ends pulled in that's what's going to happen if you hold that position there the same and you pull these in then it's going to make a it's going to go in that way and it's going to go down that way so um, hopefully that's what we can achieve and then we'll scratch build that Alexander makes a um, 3d printer well, shapeways make a 3d printed bilge keel set on behalf of Alexander and I'm sure that it's, um, it's a lovely piece of kit but it won't fit my modified hull because a this is too short and B the form is wrong um, if the, the you know often model parts are made to fit the kit okay this is something we have to be very careful of when we buy any resin parts or any PE parts the one I always use my perfect example is Edward did a cockpit set for the HK models 130 second scale B17G they've also done one for the F um, and they've made the instrument panel in the cockpit fit the kit parts the nose on the HK models B17 is a complete and utter joke it's, a, it's circular whereas it should be flat topped but obviously Edward have had to make an instrument panel to fit the kit Edward can't make a PE set to fit the kit once you've modified it to correct it otherwise they'd never sell any so you know it's the same with the with the the, the 3d printed parts from Alexander they will be made to fit this hull you know we can't sell you a pair of bilge kills and say you need to do all this to make them fit so you know basically that's um that's the way it goes so um bear that in mind whenever you're buying resin parts it may not be a correction you're buying it may just be an additional piece of detail so uh, bear that in mind so anyway um, I'm gonna get some more work done on this now I'm gonna get the other side done and then I'm gonna leave it for I don't know at least a few days to let everything set and harden and then I'll, I'll put something on the or in fact I'll probably put something inside before I leave it to leave it a few days and then I'm gonna leave it to set and harden before I start cutting about this because once we start cutting about this then we're gonna be affecting the integrity of the hull um, I'm also conscious of the fact I think this hull is too narrow and the sides are dead vertical and as I said earlier they should be they should kind of come in um, they, they, it should be basically it should be wider here than it is there okay it's not very much but it should be wider there than it is there and I think it's too narrow so I think we can do is like cut a slit along here and then just push the middle of or cut a slit probably from here to here push the hull out space it for sort of I don't know four inches just to square that area up and then fill the rest in with plastic card and that will give us a, a gentle slope but it'll also give us our pushed out center section so um thanks for watching guys i'll uh i'll see you all soon bye for now